Welcome to this episode of The Context. Recently, I had the chance to visit the country of Andorra. Thanks to my friend uh, Alex Armengol, whom I met a year ago in Madrid, uh, I was invited to see this very interesting country, a micro state between Spain and France in the mountains in a beautiful valley. Andorra has been independent for almost a thousand years and its birth and history uh, is very, very interesting. The two co-princes of Andorra are the King of France, now the uh, President of the Republic of France, and the Bishop of uh, a village close to Andorra. Actually, the reason that Andorra has been able to stay independent is because the bishop couldn't have children. What happened in uh, the Middle Ages is that any family uh, that would have a son it would acquire uh, from uh, the daughter that the son would marry of another family um, some wealth. But if the family only had daughters, then it would be their possessions that would become the dowry uh, of another family. And the bishop, never being in the position of having only daughters, at least officially, uh, meant that his possessions, i.e. the territory of the country of Andorra, could never become the dowry of uh, a, a, another family during the marriage, as a consequence of the marriage. So, for hundreds of years, uh, the inhabitants of this uh, uh, little valley uh, conducted an agrarian life, as everybody else. But in uh, the uh, 20th century, for a series of circumstances, uh, including their pretty fierce uh, new neutrality, uh, just like uh, Switzerland, uh, they uh, became able to uh, position themselves in three, four areas that uh, made them wealthy, uh, increased uh, the population tenfold, and um, also uh, created a very healthy society. Uh, today, Andorra uh, has about uh, 75,000 people, of which half are uh, of Andorran citizenship. Uh, the others are residents, but not uh, citizens. And uh, it has uh, over uh, 40,000 uh, euro of GDP per head and uh, over 80 years of uh, uh, life expectancy, positioning it in both at the very top uh, uh, of, of the world uh, rankings. The Andorran sovereignty uh, is, of course, uh, not uh, uh, exercised in a universal manner uh, in the way that uh, other larger countries exercise their uh, sovereignty. For example, uh, even if uh, uh, Andorra is independent, it doesn't have a central bank. It always used uh, uh, the money of uh, some other state and um, it now uses uh, the euro, even if it is not a member of the European Union. The uh, uh, country received uh, the, the right to actually coin or mint rather uh, its uh, uh, own uh, uh, euro coins. Um, as many of you know, uh, the euro banknotes are the same in, in every member country uh, using the euro, but uh, the euro coins uh, uh, have uh, the reverse side that is personalized according to the themes of, of the country uh, uh, that, uh, that produces them. Uh, also, uh, Andorra doesn't have uh, a standing uh, military. Every uh, adult male participates uh, in the defense of the country, 
uh, if a general alarm is uh, uh, sounded. Last time this happened uh, uh, was uh, a few decades ago, consequence of not uh, a, a military attack from the outside, but uh, because of a flooding. Uh, however, uh, every household has a rifle uh, so that uh, if uh, physical defense uh, is necessary of the country, they can uh, act rapidly, uh, even though uh, there is no dedicated military. There is, of course, police, there, is, uh, there are firefighters, uh, uh, there is uh, pretty good security because of the geography of the country, too. Um, if uh, somebody steals something, uh, you can just pick up the phone, call the border at one end or the other end or both of the country and uh, cut off uh, their, uh, their uh, escape routes. The activities that uh, uh, they um, had available beyond uh, the basic uh, farming and animal husbandry that uh, created uh, the wealth of the country uh, during the 20th century uh, were uh, finance, commerce, uh, and more recently, tourism. Um, in uh, uh, finance, of course, uh, it used to be the case that uh, uh, many uh, micro-states uh, beyond Andorra in Europe, uh, there are uh, Luxembourg, which is the largest, Liechtenstein, uh, Vatican City, Monaco, San Marino, uh, and uh, Malta, and I may be uh, forgetting some. Uh, these uh, took advantage, uh, together with other larger nations like Switzerland, for example, of uh, um, banking practices that favored um, um, secret or anonymous uh, uh, bank accounts uh, where people who uh, wanted to shield their, their wealth uh, could. Um, these practices uh, were uh, mostly legal, uh, somewhere in gray areas, and more recently uh, they became illegal. And um, all over the world, uh, pushed by the United States uh, against uh, its own uh, citizens uh, or, or residents, uh, even uh, even more inclusively, uh, banks are required to report to the American authorities uh, if uh, a U.S. Uh, resident wants to open a bank account at theirs. And uh, this legislation um, basically destroyed uh, banking secrecy all over the world and had the amazing uh, consequence of making the U.S. the fiscal paradise for people who want to, to shield uh, their, their wealth. Um, the second pillar of Andorra's uh, uh, growth in the 20th century came from commerce because uh, initially through smuggling, and then uh, uh, later on uh, via uh, shopping malls and uh, um, the cultivation and production of tobacco and, and other products, it would be able to supply both to the Spanish and to the French goods uh, that were not taxed. Basically, if you can think of uh, the largest um, uh, tax-free uh, uh, shopping uh, center in, a, in an airport, take away the airplanes and and this is what uh, a, a three kilometer two mile long uh, street uh, in andorra is uh, full of uh, shops uh, shopping centers uh, um, selling uh, all kinds of goods uh, without uh, the various taxes that uh, are added on top of the, the the price of those goods in both spain and uh, in, uh, in in france the third um, activity of tourism uh, was, of course, a very natural outgrowth of uh, the, the second because people would come and uh, after buying whatever they would buy, rather than leaving right away, they were 
incentivized to stay. Uh, Andorra is uh, already high uh, in the middle of the Pyrenees Mountains, but uh, pretty uh, rapidly the mountains rise and there is uh, an enormous amount of uh, um, space available for building uh, ski slopes and ski resorts, which is what happened. Uh, today Andorra has 2.5 million uh, hotel nights per year uh, sold to the, the tourists that come from all over the world, Europeans, um, Russians, Chinese, Americans, and, and, and so on. I was invited because all three of these activities are now under threat. The uh, financial institutions have no uh, ability to offer any differential service um, with respect to other uh, branches or, or banks in, in other countries. The uh, increasing uh, level of uh, agreements, uh, even without becoming a formal member with the European Union, are eroding the uh, ability for Andorra to uh, provide uh, products uh, at uh, a price that is sufficiently lower uh, to, be, to be attractive, and uh, global warming uh, may take away the snow. Summer uh, uh, holiday destinations uh, in the mountains, of course, are also attractive, and already uh, tourism uh, is um, balancing out uh, between the two seasons uh, so that people come not only in the peak of the winter but they also come during the summer. But still uh, Andorra initiated an effort uh, to diversify its uh, economy and it is now aiming to understand what can be done. And of course, there are a lot of things uh, that cannot be done. Uh, Andorra is not going to become a manufacturing and, and global logistics uh, center like Hong Kong, right? Or uh, Andorra uh, is uh, not going to uh, become the next uh, Silicon Valley. Um, and, and there are many, many things that can be understood. What are the constraints really around what, what can be done? Sovereignty is certainly a pretty unique and rare uh, value and an and asset that uh, they should aim uh, to leverage. Together with uh, sovereignty comes the ability to um, create and implement legislation uh, that um, they are not going to be able to create in a manner that uh, conflicts with uh, uh, what the EU wants uh, within its uh, borders um, or what the US or, or China or others uh, feel is tolerable, but still there will be uh, a pretty uh, large leeway uh, to understand uh, where to go and what kind of experimentation uh, to carry out, uh, what kind of sandboxes can be, uh, can be uh, desirable. Now, uh, as uh, many uh, small um, territories, uh, the um, adaptation through the, the centuries created a mentality of pride uh, and uh, uh, strong national identity. Uh, Andorran patriotism is, is, is strong. At the same time, there is a, a also a perception of uh, a lot of things uh, going on in the outside world and uh, Andorra having to, to catch up and uh, uh, an evaluation of its ability uh, to take risks and make decisions fast enough that may not be sufficient uh, in order to uh, stay relevant, in order to maintain or build further wealth base. Uh, uh, the country is uh, fairly um, uh, inclusive and uh, the, uh, the wealth uh, is not excessively concentrated. It has a fairly low Gini coefficient. Uh, the uh, middle class is very broad 
and it hasn't been eroded like in other countries over the course of the past few decades. Now, uh, as I met uh, um, uh, through the, the, the meetings that uh, were organized by, uh, by Alex uh, with both representatives uh, of uh, business and government, I really felt that uh, this situation uh, is almost perfect in the sense of uh, a challenge that can and, and must be faced positively. Uh, maybe the most important message that I tried to convey, and for me it was easy as an outsider, I uh, didn't have to uh, negotiate uh, too many um, compromises in the way that I would phrase my, my message or uh, the uh, fact that uh, the impact of what I would tell uh, could create uh, tension. I don't mind to provoke, I don't mind to, uh, to um, uh, jolt uh, people out uh, of their own um, situation, mental cages. So I would really physically point uh, to the hotels, uh, to the uh, ski lifts, the resorts, uh, the spas, uh, 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 to the shopping malls, uh, in our meetings and I would tell um, the, the people that we were sitting down with your grandfathers and your fathers had the courage to take risks, had the ability to take decisions in a timely manner, implement them, navigate extremely delicate situations and come out winning, winning um, that created the wealthy country uh, that you are now uh, endowed with and for which you have the responsibility of taking similar risks, making similar decisions in a timely manner in order to move forward. And there is no reason for you to feel that you are not up to the task. You are the sons and the daughters of those fathers and mothers that took, took those decisions. And I am sure you will be able to make and implement and then, and then triumphantly look back to the positive consequences of those decisions for uh, what is going to be uh, a flourishing future for uh, your families, your community, your country, and for uh, our global civilization. So I hope that the message was positively received. Um, and uh, I am pretty sure that uh, so many communities and so many countries share their uh, challenges and share uh, the questions that they are raising. Are we going to be up to the task? There are no guarantees. We are not sure of the future, but the past is a good indicator. We are the descendants of people who took decisions that make them succeed. And we are going to make decisions that our sons and our daughters will look at admiringly. They will look at uh, with a trepidation because they will be asking the same question. Are we going to be able to do the same? And the question is, warranted? And the answer is yes. The context in its first season has been a wonderful journey uh, together with all of you. And uh, uh, this is the last episode of uh, season one. Uh, season two is going to start uh, in the first weeks 
of the first year of the third decade of the third millennium. And uh, I uh, wish all of you a great holiday season. Uh, if you are taking a few days off, I'm sure you uh, deserve uh, to do so. And uh, I'm looking forward to see uh, all of you uh, in uh, January 2020. Thank you.